G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, I guess first things first is when you're wrong, you got to admit you're wrong. And I was wrong. <laughs> I honestly thought altcoins were going to continue to really bleed out from here and Bitcoin might get on a bit of a run. That is not what's happened. There was definitely a dip and I didn't buy and I had plenty of cash on the side to buy, but I thought, no, it's going to go lower and... Bitcoin and not only Bitcoin, but cryptocurrencies in general have just gone to show me that, look, they're going to do what they're going to do. And just when you think you've got it figured out, you don't. Now, in saying that, altcoins could take a massive dive tomorrow. It's just not looking likely at the moment. Every time there's a, a dip other than that last dip we had from Bitcoin, where altcoins have just been pumping ever since, dips really just don't last that long. And yeah, look, most of the altcoins pretty much bounce back straight away. So, yep, I was wrong. And yeah, I'm not sure what's going to happen from here. It does still feel like particularly Bitcoin and Ethereum, they're just stuck in a range. Bitcoin cannot, sorry, Ethereum cannot break that $2,000 mark and Bitcoin can't really break the $50,000 mark. It did kind of tip over it. I think it wicked above and then just pulled back down again. So, I guess we're waiting to see. It's finally Monday morning over in the States. All the big markets have opened and I guess they're still enthusiastic about Bitcoin and other altcoins in general because that was a very, very quick dip from some of those coins. And look, some coins did retrace 20, 30%, uh, but it just didn't last long. And I am kicking myself now because I wanted to buy in uh, some of the altcoins at cheaper prices than when I sold them. And it looks like I'm just not gonna get that opportunity at the moment. That may change, but at the moment, I was wrong and that's life that's all right uh you know the game continues <laughs> all right let's have a quick look market cap back over 1.5 trillion dollars so again we this you know yes we have dips but geez it bounces back really fast at the moment that is really really quick so good to see bitcoin dominance gaining a little bit getting back close to that 60 percent ETH dominance, it was at 13.4, so again, rising a little bit, but altcoins are still just going absolutely mental. And you can tell by a lot of the gas fees, because it's not like Ethereum itself is really pumping, it's still stuck around that $1,700, $1,800 mark, but the gas fees are high, and this isn't even as high as they've been. The gas fees get high, really, when a lot of people are getting stuck into the altcoins. Ethereum as well, but definitely the altcoins. Right. What has pumped in the top 100 in the last 24 hours? Well, oh, there we go. Cosmos, Horizon, Digibyte, Iota, Kasama, Icon, Phantom, Ren, Polkadot, Elrond. I mean, Elrond, I was, I was looking at it going, yes, I'm going to get a good point to get in. And I didn't take it because I thought we were going to have a few more days of downside. And I've missed it. Again, this could all turn around tomorrow or in the next five minutes. We don't know. But at the moment, it just looks like the market is yeah, just too bullish. Any corrections that happen, they're just not going to last too long. Icon, oh, look out, coming back from the dead. So, I mean, these are all some good double-digit sort of gains there we can see in 24 hours. What about losses, though? Were there any losses in the top 100 in the last 24 hours? Nah, not really. Not really at all. Energy Web Token, I mean, it went up 70% and it's lost 1.7. Dash, again, up over 100%, lost 1.2%. And then Tether, it's just bouncing around between, you know, the dollar one and the 99 cent range that it generally bounces around. And then again, we can all, we can see just a lot of sort of low single digit sort of gains for the worst of them. Again, that's the worst of them, like Aave. You know, it was down 7% and now it's up, you know, 1.1%. XRP, 56 cents. It was a little bit higher. I think it was up around sort of 59 cents. So it still has retraced and you can see that over on the chart here. But no real big losses in the 24 hours. Basically everything, at least in the top 100, has recovered quite well from that dip. All right, let's have a look at the charts because we do have some pretty good news uh, to have a look at after this. But I drew this line yesterday and I said, will it continue to follow this line or breach and it's bounced off it almost perfectly and look i just drew a line looking at uh, where the wicks had been going down and it's just followed suit it's not like i'm some amazing technical anal analyst who knows exactly how to draw lines you just marry them up with these others and again they're not exactly on there you could possibly lift that up just a little bit if you wanted to around about there 
and then this wick would go down just a little bit but that one would also bounce right off it perfectly and again 50 day moving average 100 day moving average and 200 day moving average the 200 day moving average is still down at nineteen thousand dollars so that would be very interesting if we saw a steep correction not so much a rejection a correction and it did manage to get back down to nineteen thousand dollars most people would absolutely freak out and lose their minds if we really got below sort of 30 30,000 even 35,000 which is around about where the 50 day moving average is people would freak out unless they'd been in the space for a while the newbies would panic and think oh this is the end of uh, the you know the bear runs here and look you know who knows maybe it could be no one knows exactly when it's going to happen but look things still looking pretty bullish for bitcoin at the moment and the other coins in general as well I really did think that Bitcoin might come down and at least retest this 50-day moving average. We haven't tested it since 27th of Jan. So that's not too long ago, two weeks. But then before that, we didn't touch this 50-day moving average until way back here. That was in October last year. So maybe that was the opportunity there and maybe even sort of over here where if you didn't take advantage of it, you could be waiting a while before you get another opportunity at just the 50-day, let alone the 100 or the 200. All right, let's move on to some news. This, this is exciting. So the graph, I did a video on the graph a while ago and I love what they're doing and I love what they're all about. Again, it's uh, storing data in a decentralized fashion uh, as opposed to the big silos that things like Amazon, Google, Facebook have on our data. And anyway, you can go back and find that video if you wanna know more about the graph, sorry, I was gonna say the data, <laughs> the graph. And also you can just YouTube other videos about the graph for, a, again, an even more detailed look into it. But it says here, blockchain data indexing protocol, the graph, or the graph, however you want to say it, is considering Bitcoin, Polkadot, and Binance Smart Chain, among, other, among others, after launching on Ethereum. Now, the graph did extremely well. I mean, that has been one of my best performing coins. I, I, I was lucky I got in at a reasonably good time now that I can look at it. When I initially bought, it dumped a bit. And so I thought, all right, I've made a bad choice. And then it pumped a couple hundred percent and I was able to very quickly sell only a few of the coins and get all my money back and even a tiny bit of profit. So uh, I've been quite pleased price-wise of how the graph has performed, but I am looking forward to what they have sort of coming. And again, go and do some deeper research on the graph and I think you might like it too, but this, Again, makes me feel even more bullish about the graph, but I know that they are going to release a reasonable amount of coins from the early investors in the next few months, and that could see a price decline. But again, that's just could. There's no guarantee that you know the early VCs and that are now gonna to wanna to sell, but they might. All right, next. Market cap tops 1.5 trillion as Polkadot replaces Cardano on the top four market watch. Let's go back and have a look. All right, was that the case? I didn't even look at that really. But also, Cardano's done quite well. But it did, there we go. It did, it pipped it. Oh, right, what's the um, the price? 89 cents to 30, and look at the market caps. They are very close there. So yeah, Cardano's just fallen behind. 1.5 trillion as Ma as Polkadot replaces Cardano in the top four. That is impressive. So well done to Polkadot. I, I have bought a, you know, a small bag at least of Polkadot and I'm pretty much just letting that ride at the moment. I'm not even close to trying to cash out on any of that. It hasn't performed really well enough for me to cash out to a point where I don't have to sell too much and I've actually got my money back. So I'm happy to just kind of let it ride and if it turns around and backfires on me then I won't have lost thousands and thousands of dollars anyway but I do like polka dot I do like the cross chain compatibility and all the rest of it uh, and I'm very glad that they are doing quite well and look I'm invested in Cardano as well and I like Cardano so there's a bit of disappointment that polka dot has overtaken Cardano but not really because I like polka dot as well I'm happy for them to just keep battling it out for you know third and fourth position and fifth position and things like that uh, as long as they both do well then I'm going to be okay with that but again talking about that so we go over here and Cardano's market cap has doubled to 28 billion in two weeks Cardano well done 28 billion that is very nice and again there's lots of things coming up for Cardano they're looking at mer not merging but 
having cross-chain compatibility with Litecoin, so that'll be good with Litecoin. They've got smart contracts coming out. They already have staking currently underway. So there's lots of really good things happening with Cardano. And I do believe there's gonna be enough space for more than just one blockchain. Now, don't get me wrong, I think one is going to rule, similar to you know, how Google sort of does and things like that. But I think there's gonna be room for others. And I do think that you know people will still be able to make really good returns. But the money is mostly being bet on Ethereum at the moment to be the winner. And look, I, I really like Ethereum and I do think it's the better platform out of all of them, except the fees at the moment. They need to get layer two solution done so quick it's not funny because Cardano doesn't have high gas fees, doesn't have that problem and neither does Polkadot. But the problem that Cardano and Polkadot do have is they don't have enough people building on them at the moment to really kind of you know scare Ethereum. But the longer Ethereum doesn't have layer two solutions and the gas fees stay high, then the more ground they will simply start to lose. So yeah. Ying, ying, ying and yang i'm happy that cardano i'm happy that polka dot is doing well a little bit sad that cardano got overtaken but maybe tomorrow then cardano overto overtakes polka dot and they can just keep fighting it out like that forever as long as they both keep doing well then i won't have a problem now verge i got into this because i verge was one of my best performing projects back in 2017 i think i put like 40 50 dollars into verge and turned it into Oh, nearly a thousand, two thousand dollars. So I thought, oh, Virgil will probably do really well again. And don't get me wrong, it's still performed okay. But a 51% attack. These are some of the problems that you're going to face in cryptocurrencies. So Verge has gone through an attempted 51% attack. The team has revealed that the funds are safe and that the attempt has failed. So that's good that it's failed, but it is still worrying that, you know, there's obviously mining rigs and things like that which you know mining pools i guess you could say that have the ability to try and do a 51 percent attack so concerning i hope verge gets that sorted out i know a lot of people i think it's Pornhub or something crazy like that some sex site that uh is using verge and bitcoin for payments because uh they can't use cash anymore because the banks that they used to bank through wouldn't allow them uh, to do business with them anymore so that's a bit disappointing and i could be wrong about verge but i'm pretty sure verge was one of them so hopefully they can get that sorted because Verge is a bit of an old school project as in at least, you know, pre-2018. Uh, and yeah, it'd be nice if they can stick around and have another run. Maybe I'll put some more money into them, but they weren't doing quite well enough in comparison to my other investments. So I took my money out of Verge and I think I might have taken it out at a loss. I'll have to go back and check. But if it was a loss, it wasn't too big. All right, last but not least, Ripple. SEC say settlement unlikely before trial is over, uh, before the trial over the alleged securities fraud. So there was talk that this would possibly be settled by, I think someone said the 15th or the 16th of February, which is today or yesterday. And there was talk that maybe, you know, they would settle or the lawsuit would be dropped and things like that. It seems like that hasn't been the case. So again, I think Ripple is really going, well, XRP, not so much Ripple, but I think XRP is really going to struggle to have major pumps. I'm not saying it can't pump at all, because it definitely can. But, you know, the kind of price pumps that people were expecting from XRP, I don't think they're going to happen in this cycle unless until this gets sorted one way or the other. The SEC drops the lawsuit or, you know, Ripple beat them or they pay out whatever it is i just don't think there'll be any big price side uh, movement from xrp until this gets sorted one way or the other all right so my question for you is do you agree with that do you think ripple can still pump with this whole sec lawsuit behind it uh, i don't think it can i'm not saying it can't rise and look it's at 56 cents i still think it could maybe go to you know two three dollars i just don't think it's going to go to the ten dollars or the couple of hundred dollars that some people thought it would with this uh, lawsuit um, still in play until that lawsuit is done i just can't see it happening but i'd love to know your thoughts down below all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're all on that game train things are looking pretty good at the moment and I'll see you next time.